Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about spending on public cloud computing services will grow by nearly a quarter this year, but more of that spending is going to small number of vendors. According to analyst firm Gartner, worldwide spending on public cloud services will grow 21.4% this year to 186.4 billion US dollars up from 153.5 billion US dollars in 2017. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great topic because a lot of my clients are asking the same question. That's why I stuck it out there. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it's, it is a great topic. So are we spending too much money with too few public cloud companies, do you think? I think the other technology providers would say yes, but at least we're not spending too much money with one provider, you know, kind of like we did with Microsoft and IBM in the past and, and other large companies. And the, the pattern is that we typically like to declare uh, two or three companies the winner and really kind of spend money around them versus, you know, spreading it amongst 10 different companies that are out there. So it's AMG. Amazon, Microsoft, Google are the ones that are there, and those are kind of the ones that have anointed as the winners. It's not a winner, it's winners. And we're spending money to place our bets in terms of which cloud provider is going to be the best bet for our, for our enterprises. And there's Alley Cloud out there now, and according to some estimates, they may be moving ahead of Google, which is fine. Then we have four players, but you still have Oracle and IBM and uh, a bunch of different smaller players have been out there for just as long as AWS, but just don't seem to be making in the market. And I think that enterprises are seeing that and they're voting with their dollars and they see the momentum around the big three and not necessarily around the big 10. So I don't really think we're going to see any kind of uh, downside from this. I think as long as there's three or four players in the market and they're competing against each other, um, we're not going to have any kind of price pressures where we're going to have a monopoly. And that's actually a concern that one cloud provider owns 80% of the space and therefore can raise and lower prices at will. I think we're going to have enough price pressure to make that, make that not going to be the case. And I think we're going to have enough innovation and enough spend in the market, market to keep the market going for quite some time. So I don't see it to be a problem, even though I think it's probably disconcerting now that we're looking at the, the money that's being spent in the public cloud computing space is well close to $200 billion. And, you know, it's going to go up to $300 billion by the end of next year and certainly, you know, a trillion dollars in five years. And the amount of money has to be spent in order for those vendors to provide the services that we're looking to leverage to substitute the on-premise systems for the cloud-based systems. And so that's just the economic reality of it. So these guys are gonna get bigger and we might as well accept the fact they're gonna get bigger. They really are, and they're growing at such a rate, like you just said, and a new contender coming into the Ali, you know, Ali Cloud coming into that space is uh, certainly making a, an impact for you know SMEs stepping into the cloud market. But I was gonna just, just thinking about it, could you give at least five other concerns when choosing a cloud provider other than just a price point? Are there, are there five key things that you would be able to share today on today's show that, that would uh, highlight certain things that people should look for other than just price? Yeah, features and functions would be it. In other words, do they have the features and functions that match up to your, your requirements? So if your applications are going to exist in this public cloud, provider, are they able to provide the management, the monitoring, the governance, the performance management, those sorts of things which need to be there. Next would be security. Are they going to provide the security you need uh, to both match up to your business requirements as well as compliance in your certain industry that's there? Are they going to be able to provide the performance and integration to your existing systems? Can you sync information up from your existing on-premise systems into their cloud systems and do so with relative ease? And then final, Finally, it's uh, it's really about um, you know it's really about confidence in the provider. So in other words, are they going to be around in five years, ten years? You're going to walk down the aisle with these guys, and you're going to basically localize your applications, which are going to be very difficult to uh, bolt up, to unbolt and put on another cloud. And so, are you confident that these are good partners going forward? Especially if you're a global two thousand company, you're going to spend a lot of money with these partners. And those are the, you know, those are the top five, including the one we just mentioned. Yeah, no, I think that 
that's a great rundown for people to start asking those key questions because you know answering just those five points you, you tend to sort of open up pandora's box really with the the real needs and the wants of uh, of what the company actually is requiring cloud computing to do isn't it that's right i mean cloud computing is not unlike purchase of any other technology over time we're just using it as a utility service versus installing it on premise and we should expect the same quality of service support operational support, security, governance, compliance, all those things that are really important to us. And so you shouldn't feel bad about putting the uh, screws to your public cloud provider and making sure that you hold their feet to the fire in terms of them providing the quality of service that you need to make it happen. And whether they get big or not, that's irrelevant. Their, their ability to support you is their, your, their ability to be you're a cloud provider of choice, and I don't really care about their revenue. I care about the way in which they're producing services to me. Yes, 100%. And one of the, the quick points just to cover off, one of the last points would be the, the, the locking clauses on the contracts as well, uh, making sure that they are you know, a, a bit more flexible than, than just locking you in. Yeah, I mean, there's costs of leaving a cloud, there's egress costs for the data, but the thing is, it's going to cost you millions and millions of dollars if you've gone into a particular cloud provider and you decided those guys are not going to basically carry you forward and you have to move to another cloud provider. You typically couple those applications to the cloud via native APIs and interfaces you're leveraging, uh, and lots of things are going to be cloud dependent. And your ability to kind of move workloads off of those clouds and put them on other clouds is going to be something that's going to be very difficult and very costly to do. So make sure you factor that into the cost of uh, egress or basically leaving the cloud to move to another cloud. Or in some cases, uh, people are, I think in some instances, are going to leave the public cloud space to move things back on premises, specifically if they haven't been um, fit correctly. So in other words, we're moving workloads in some cases to cloud providers where they really shouldn't be there. And, we may re want to renormalize those and move them back on premise and move some of the things on premise back to the cloud. Yeah, absolutely right. Dave, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. It's been great having you on and uh, you're back in the US for a very short while. <laughs> yeah, and then on, on, to, on to the world tour. So uh, catch me in a country near you. Yeah, exactly. No, it's great to have you back on. Thanks for your time today, Dave. That's awesome. Pleasure. Well, thanks for watching the C-Suite show, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this show. And remember to stay tuned for next week's show. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the future videos and the previous ones. Uh, you can also get our um, shows on iTunes as well, on a podcast, so you don't have to, to watch them. You can just listen to us instead. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed the shows. Look forward to you watching them next week.